Hey, this is Jake from Minimal Audio, and I'm here today to show you guys our new plugin, Fuse Compressor. Fuse Compressor is a multi-band dynamics processing effect, which supports up to six bands of dual upwards and downwards compression. Now, we all know that in modern electronic music, multi-band dynamics processing has become very important to our workflows, but it can be a little bit of a pain to work with. For example, just to set up three bands of dynamic processing for the classic OTT effect requires tuning manually up to 18 parameters. We feel like there's a better way. What we've done with Fuse Compressor is put a bunch of research into the most cutting edge types of envelope detection for super responsive compressors. We've then wrapped them up into a really nice interface which allows you to macro control all the bands at once. When you need to dial in the specific settings for an individual band, you have that control as well. But we find that generally, once you have your base parameters set up, you kind of want to just move all of the settings at once. Let's hop into Ableton and I'll show you how Fuse Compressor can take the traditional approach to multiband dynamics processing and make it faster and more intuitive. All right, so here we are in Ableton. I've gone ahead and added two loops from our stream, which I thought went well together and could be a good basis for this video. Here, let's give a listen to them now. Okay, so let's take a look at Fuse Compressor and see what it can do for these sounds. I'm going to go ahead and add it to the melodic loop for now. All right, so when you first open Fuse Compressor, you'll be met with a pretty gentle preset, which should work for a wide variety of sounds. I'll go ahead and play that on that loop now. And again with it off. So you can hear by default it's scooping a little bit of the mids out of the sound and making the sound a little bit flatter across the spectrum. You can actually see that with this white line here, which shows you the real-time readout of the gain scaling, which is applying to the different bands of your sound. Cool. So what do we have going on here? By default, we have these three bands. This is by far the most important part of the interface, which is what we feel a really nice and intuitive way of working with good visual readouts and fast, responsive displays. In the back of the display, you'll see two different spectrograms. The spectrogram without a stroke is the input signal, while the spectrogram with a stroke is the output signal. This allows you to really easily see how the compressor is changing your sound. For example, I'll quickly just scoop out the mid so we can see that response. All right, so for now, I'm just gonna turn it down to one band so we can talk about compression a little bit. Like I mentioned before, each band in Fuse Compressor applies dual compression to the sound. This means that there's both an upwards and a downwards compressor inside of the band. The downwards threshold can be denoted by this line here, and you can see it's sitting at minus 18 dB in the readout at the top right there. And the ratio is here, and you can see by default it's at four over one. So what this means is that when the sound goes over minus 18 dB, for every four decibels it goes over minus 18 dB, three decibels will be removed from the sound. Likewise, for the upwards compression, which is set at default to minus 40 dB, for every four decibels that the sound goes below minus 40 dB, three decibels of gain will be added to the sound. When working with this UI, you can sort of think about the downward compressor here and the upward compressor here, working to squeeze the dynamic range of the sound into this range here. So now that we've looked at the single band, let's add the other two bands back in and see what other features are in this display. So now that we have three bands again, there's a couple other things that this UI gives us. You can control the crossover of each band using these handles here, as well as the output of each band using these handles here. This allows you to sculpt or sort of EQ the sound after the compression. Likewise, you also have the option to solo each band if you want to focus on listening to how that individual band is being compressed. And you can also bypass a band so that there's no compression applied to this part of the signal. When mousing over the UI, the little readout on the right responds to where your mouse is and shows you the current settings for that parameter. I'm gonna go ahead and flip through some of the presets Fuse Compressor gives us on this loop just to hear some of the variety of the sound. So moving on from the display itself, we have a different set of parameters over here. You can go up to six stages by selecting six bands over here. By default, the compressor is in stereo mode, but if you'd like to switch to mid-side mode, that can be helpful as well for bringing out the side signal of the sound. And the channel link here will change the left and the right or the mid-side of the sound to have individual gain computation for the dynamics happening in that channel. Let's talk a little bit more about what macro controls make this so special and easy to use. Across the bottom of the compressor, we start to get into the macro controls. So let's load up a preset. 
And let's say we have this pad enhance preset. Now that sounds pretty good, but let's say we wanted to bring up the uh, upward threshold a little bit for all the different bands. So you can change the upward here to bring all the all of the upward thresholds up together. Now let's say we wanted more compression or a higher ratio on that upward compression. Likewise, you can turn up the ratio of all the different bands here together. This same thing works for the downward threshold. So you can move these ones like that and like that and generally make batch changes to the preset pretty easily. Nice, that's sounding pretty pretty bright and fat. Here's without the compressor. And with the compressor. Another thing we've done with Fuse Compressor is rethink about how we deal with attack and release times on multiband dynamics processors. Generally, you have to tune individual attack and release times for each individual band. This can sometimes be a little bit time consuming and, and hard to hear the actual overall effect of the processing across all the different bands. What we've done is added this nifty feature called adaptive time. Okay, so with this preset, we've got an attack of one millisecond and a release of 250 milliseconds, an adaptive time of 60%. If we turn on the tooltip, we can get a little bit more information. So positive settings will make higher frequency bands respond faster and lower frequency bands respond slower. And then the inverse is true for negative times. So let's play around with the attack and release and adaptive time and see how it kind of changes the character of the compression. <laughs> So you can see, um, you know, especially watching the uh, gain response of this band in particular, as I turn the adaptive time up, we get a much faster attack and release time in this band. And as I turn it down, we get a slower one. It doesn't make as big of a difference in the low end of the sound because it's a pretty steady low end. There's not a lot of dynamic range in that part of the sound. So the compressor is kind of just sitting at, uh, you know, a stable compression setting, regardless of how fast the attack and release time are. So traditionally, to kind of change the attack and release of these different four bands, you'd have to dial in different attack and release settings for each individual band to kind of achieve a different sound. And, you know, it might be something that you wouldn't really feel too kind of flow state when you're doing. You'd be tweaking and tweaking and listening and not really getting an immediate kind of overall character change inside of the sound until you were done tuning all the different bands together. So the way I've found adaptive time works really well is kind of play your sound and then play with the attack and release and the adaptive time all individually and you'll kind of be able to cycle through different attack and release settings for all the bands in a really much more intuitive manner than how we're used to doing this. So let's give that a shot. So you can hear with this setting, we're getting much more kind of even compression across the whole spectrum. The highs are still present and sounding good, but the bass is actually kind of even become more present in the sound. Cool. So I hope you can see how quickly you can kind of dial in the whole spectrum using the adaptive time settings. It's worth noting for all the settings inside of Fuse Compressor, we've added really detailed tooltips here. So click this little question mark here and you'll get a really nice description as well as some suggestions on how to use different parameters inside of the plugin. I'm going to go ahead and unmute the drums and let's hear how the drums in this pad are working together now. You can hear it's a much more present and meaningful sound working against the drums now. Uh, let's go ahead and bypass it. Cool, so moving on, let's go ahead and put Fuse Compressor on the drums and see what we can do for those. 
So because these drums are already pretty well mixed and processed, I'm actually gonna go ahead and lock the dry wet here at around 30%. And let's try to play around with some parallel compression on the drums. If you're unaware of how parallel compression works, the general concept is you have a nice dynamic sound, which is the bass, but you want to bring up some, some of that heavily compressed signal into the mix to sort of add more presence to that nice dynamic sound. Cool. So I found this ultra soft preset and you can hear by itself, it sounds a little bit uh, unnatural on this drum loop. But let's try it as a parallel compressor effect. It brings out a lot of the kind of high-end shakers of it, but it doesn't lose the character of the sound too much. So without Fuse Compressor, and with Fuse Compressor, for fun, let's try another halftime drum loop. Here's what it sounds like by itself. And let's try the Drum Smackdown preset. Without fuse compressor. And with fuse compressor. This sounds like a good setting for parallel compression, so let's go ahead and lock it at 40% wet, and I will flip through some more presets. Ooh, I like the kind of deep kind of subtle sizzle that one adds. So with those two process loops, we now have and without fuse compressor on both of those sounds, it sounds like this. And we'll turn fuse compressor back on. All right, so now that we've taken a look at those controls, I want to take one more look at how the attack and release can help you work with the pumping of your drums. For that, I have this drum loop here. And I'm gonna turn fuse compressor on with this extreme mid side preset. So another really interesting parameter inside of fuse compressor is the tilt parameter. Tilt, adjust all per band dynamics simultaneously and tilt the intensity of compression towards lower or higher frequencies. So you can kind of think of this tilt one while this threshold and this ratio bring these different bands up and down. What this tilt one's gonna do is instead of moving all of them up together, it's gonna slope them one way or the other. So I'll play the drum loop again and we can hear what the tilt control does. Cool. You can also see in this side of the screen, we have soft knee control and makeup gain. Makeup gain is just going to simply macro control all of these individual bands together. And soft knee is the typical knee control that you used to when working with compressors. It defines a decibel range around the threshold where the compression should gradually kick into effect as opposed to starting only at the threshold. So I hope that gives you guys a good overview of Fuse Compressor and how it can help you in working with multiband dynamics processing inside your productions. It can be pretty fun to set up a preset or get some sort of uh, you know sound you like working and then play with these macro controls while you're working in the mix and while you're listening and 
hear how just how drastically you can change those compressor settings to you know really dial in your sounds. I hope you guys will give it a shot. And of course, if you need anything else from us, always feel free to contact us and support.